Okay, let's unpack this. Imagine looking up at the night sky, right, and seeing something truly, well, something that defies our expectations. Uh -huh. We're talking about this interstellar visitor, 3i18 less. Just recently, actually September 7th, 2025, it made this dramatic color shift from reddish to a vibrant green. Yeah. It's pretty startling, like the universe putting on an unscripted light show just for us. Exactly. So today we're diving deep into 3i Atlas. We'll explore its uh, incredible anomalies and figure out how its surprising behavior connects to this bigger conversation. About scientific discovery, right? Yeah. And these un unexplained phenomena. Yeah, and the absolute importance of an evidence-based approach to the unknown. We'll pull in fascinating data points from you know various telescopes, really dissect what makes 3i Atlas so unique, mm -hmm. and then connect that spirit of scientific inquiry to discussions happening right here on Earth about UAP is unidentified anomalous phenomena. Our mission really is to give you a shortcut to understanding this cutting edge space research and critical thinking about it. Hopefully give you those aha moments without, you know, getting totally overwhelmed. And what's truly fascinating here, I think, is how 3i laws is just a perfect case study for how science actually grapples with the unexpected. Yeah, yeah. We're not just looking at a, you know, a pretty color change. We're witnessing a real cosmic puzzle. Mm -hmm. It actively challenges our current understanding of comets, of interstellar objects. It forces us to ask questions. Exactly. It makes us ask, mm -hmm. how do we approach things that just don't fit our existing models? So the things that force us to kind of scratch our heads and maybe reevaluate our deepest assumptions. So let's jump right into this cosmic chameleon 3i LAS and this incredible transformation. The latest deep imaging from September 7th shows this really pronounced green glow around it, mm. which is just such a stark contrast to all the previous studies, the spectroscopic ones, which consistently showed it as reddish. Yeah, consistently reddish. You don't often see something in deep space change its colors like that. Not at all. And this isn't just like a cosmetic shift, yeah. though it's definitely visually stunning. Oh, yeah. The main hypothesis, scientifically speaking, points to a really steep rise in the production of cyanide, specifically the CN molecule. Okay, cyanide. That was reported by the Very Large Telescope back on August 25th. And what's more, there's this accompanying dramatic increase in nickel production. Nickel. But not iron. Yeah, notably without iron, which is interesting in itself. Right. And these increases aren't just steady, they're they're exploding, following this power law relationship as it gets closer to the sun. So as the heliocentric distance decreases. Right. The closer it gets, the faster this green glow intensifies. Yeah. It's almost like a switch was flipped, you know, from minimal output to warp speed in its chemical outgassing. It signals a really fundamental change. Wow. And this object, it's been throwing curveballs for a while now, hasn't it? Oh, definitely. The ATLS telescope team, they released data going back to March 28th, 2025. And it showed something really unusual with its plume, its its cloud of gas and dust. Mm -hmm. Initially, when it was further out, like beyond 3.3 times the Earth's sun distance. Yeah, 3.3 AU. Its brightness increased incredibly sharply as it got closer to the sun. But then, as it got even closer, that rapid brightening just tapered off, surprisingly. Which is counterintuitive, right? You'd expect it to keep getting brighter faster. Exactly. It wasn't just a minor blip. It seemed to signal a fundamental shift in how it was interacting with sunlight. Precisely. Hmm. And the ATLA's team, their interpretation is that this marks a big change in how it's shedding material. Okay. Initially, sunlight was mostly scattering off dust, lifted from what they figured was a reddish surface. Standard enough. Right, like a normal comet surface, maybe? Sort of. But as it got closer, the process shifted. It started producing these small, optically bright, icy grains. Ah, uh, so not just reddish dust anymore. No. Essentially, it went from kind of passively shedding reddish dust to actively generating these brilliant, icy particles. It's like the object completely changed its skin, you could say. Ah. Uh -huh. And that changes how it reflects light, altering the plume's opacity, making it totally unpredictable. Okay, so a green glow, a shifting plume, and as if that wasn't enough, Hubble got in on the act. Mm -hmm. Hubble images from July 21st. Right, when 3i Alice was still pretty far out, about 3.8 AU, and it revealed another really perplexing thing. The scattered light, the plume, it extended towards the sun. Towards the sun, which is highly unusual. Isn't it usually the other way? Almost always. Yeah. For typical comets, the tail or plume points away from the sun. It gets pushed by the solar wind by radiation pressure. So this is like watching a car drive forward while its exhaust plume shoots out the front. Uh, yeah, that's a decent analogy. It really scrambles our standard models for how comets behave. So why? 
Why is it pushing into the solar wind? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? We also have more pieces to the puzzle from the Webb Space Telescope. Yeah. Data collected August 6th. Okay. And the SphereX Space Observatory, that was August 8th to 12th. These observations gave us the plume's composition. And what did they find? Mostly water, like a regular comet. Not even close. It was dominated by carbon dioxide, oh. CO2, an astounding 87% by mass. 87%. Yep. Carbon monoxide, CO, was about 9%, and water, H2O, made up most of the leftover 4%. Wow. So it's basically like a giant block of dry ice outgassing. That's a huge component, yeah. Way more CO2 rich than typical comets we see from our own solar system. And then you mentioned its path. Ah, yes. It's alignment. Highly improbable alignment with the ecliptic plane, that flat plane where all the planets orbit the sun. How improbable? The calculation was a mere 0.2 pretend chance probability of it aligning just so. Very, very unlikely for an interstellar visitor just passing through. Okay, wait. So plume pointing the wrong way, crazy high CO2 levels, and this super unlikely path. Exactly. These factors, all together, they significantly differentiate 3i Atlas. Not just from the comets we know, but even from the other interstellar objects we've seen. Like Umawua and Borisov. Right. It's a truly unique signature that just demands our attention. I remember when this data first started coming out. The chatter among researchers wasn't just, what are we missing? It was more like, okay, what else is this thing going to throw at us? Heh, yeah. A humbling reminder, maybe. Definitely humbling. Shows how much we still have to learn out there. So... Given all these incredible anomalies we've just run through, how does 3i Atlas really stack up against Umumua and Borisov? What makes it stand out as more anomalous, would you say? That's a great question because, yeah, we have seen these interstellar objects before and they've each taught us something. Right. Umumua was the first weird shape, no coma. Exactly. What I Umumua was fascinating. No signs of evaporation, that visible coma, but it did show non-gravitational acceleration. It sped up for no obvious reason, pushing itself somehow. Which was strange enough. Very strange. Then came 2i Borisov. And despite being from another star system, it acted, well, pretty much like a familiar comet. It had a tail, it outgassed, it followed the rules we expected. Okay, so Borisov was kind of normal, relatively speaking. Relatively speaking, yes. But 3i Atlas, it's just in a league of its own. It's not one oddity, mm. like... Umuamua's acceleration or Borisov just being from far away. It's this whole collection of anomalies. The color change, the plume direction, the composition, the path. All of it. Acting like no comet or interstellar object we've ever documented. It really forces us to question our categories, our very definition of what an interstellar object can be. So 3 at last really pushes us, doesn't it? Forces us to question those preconceived notions about what's possible out there. Absolutely. And it seems like it's exactly this commitment to genuine scientific inquiry, you know, challenging dogma with actual data that connects us directly to Avi Loeb's work. He's central to the sources we're looking at today, right? That's right. And beyond just these interstellar objects, Loeb applies that same rigorous approach to things happening closer to home. He does. And this isn't just some fascinating cosmic anomaly in isolation. It's a prime example of how nature constantly challenges our assumptions, forcing us to reevaluate what we think we know. Wow. And that very spirit, that rigorous, open-minded scientific inquiry, is really at the heart of Avi Loeb's work. He authored our source material, and his efforts go beyond interstellar visitors to phenomena right here in our atmosphere, specifically UAPs. Unidentified anomalous phenomena. Exactly. And his work takes on even more significance. Literally today, September 9th, 2025, there's a congressional hearing happening. Oh, right. Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna. Yes, she's chairing a hearing of the Task Force on Declassification of Federal Secrets. The title is quite telling. Restoring Public Trust Through UAP Transparency and Whistleblower Protection. Wow. So this is timely. This hearing, it highlights this growing push for more serious evidence-based investigation into UAPs which sounds like it aligns perfectly with Loeb's Galileo project. It does. The goals are very similar. Collect high-quality data, analyze it rigorously, regardless of where it leads. And Jeffrey Nutatelli, a U.S. Air Force veteran, actually testified today. His first recommendation to Congress was pretty clear, wasn't it? Extremely clear. He said, essentially, fund independent research and treat UAP study with the same seriousness as any other scientific field. Get it out of the shadows and into mainstream science. And Loeb himself, he was on News Nation's Morning in America today, too, wasn't he? What was his take? He emphasized that this UAP discussion, it isn't about public relations in a popularity contest. He framed it as a topic of great relevance for national security and science. Moving it beyond just 
you know, sensationalism. Precisely. He used this powerful analogy too, reminding us that human history is just full of misconceived notions, like the belief that the sun revolved around the earth. Which people believed for millennia. For billions of years, collectively. But as he points out, eventually credible evidence leads to agreement on the truth. It's not about what we want to believe or what fits our narrative. It's about what the data actually shows. Which brings up a really important question. Yeah. Are we as a society really prepared to confront new evidence that might overturn some really long held beliefs the same way we have to when we see cosmic anomalies like three i atlas that's the core issue i think are we willing to follow the evidence even if it leads to uncomfortable places it's a critical point so what does loeb see as the fundamental difference between someone who just clings to old ideas versus a genuine scientist when they're faced with unexpected high quality data well his perspective is very clear as a scientist, he says he responds to evidence and not to what people tell me. He doesn't rely on authority or pronouncements. Just the data. Just the data. And this is the crucial distinction he makes between a dogmatist and a genuine scientist. When faced with scientific quality data, mm -hmm. that doesn't fit. The dogmatist, he explains, will shove anomalous data under the carpet of traditional thinking. They'll try to preserve their existing worldview at all costs. Right. Try to make it fit somehow or ignore it. Exactly. But... An open-minded scientist, Loeb says, will be thrilled to learn something new with an underlying sense of humility. They see anomalies as opportunities, not threats. That's a key difference. Thrilled versus threatened. It is. And he finds it really limiting, this assumption that everything in the sky must be either icy rocks or human-made technologies. Those are the only two boxes allowed. That's the implicit assumption sometimes. And he argues that this kind of narrow thinking, quote, will not rid us of cosmic neighbors if they exist out there. It implies we need to be open to entirely new categories of phenomena, things we haven't even conceived of yet. We might be blinding ourselves by only looking for things we already know. Potentially. It leads to his really profound statement. Nature is more imaginative than we are. I like that. But it also does not care whether we figure it out. Nature just is. It's up to us to be curious and rigorous enough to understand it. That's a powerful reminder, isn't it? Sometimes the biggest barrier isn't the data itself, but just our own willingness to be open to what it's actually telling us, even if it contradicts our assumptions. It really highlights the humility you need in real scientific discovery. Absolutely. So we've taken quite a journey today, haven't we? A deep dive into this remarkable object, 3i Atlas, mm -hmm. an interstellar visitor that literally changed color before our eyes. Yeah, quite the trip. We've looked at its perplexing green glow, that rapid spike in cyanide and nickel, its bizarre plume dynamics pushing toward the sun, and its really unique chemical makeup, just dominated by CO2. Each part a puzzle in itself. And this whole deep dive, it just shows that the universe is constantly surprising us, constantly challenging our most fundamental understanding of what's out there and our ability to learn, to adapt, whether we're looking at deep space or closer to home, it seems directly tied to our commitment to evidence and that open-minded inquiry. Yeah. Just like Avi Loeb is advocating for with the Galileo Project. Absolutely. We started with an object, 3i at last, that basically upended cosmic behavior, turning from red to green, acting in ways we just never predicted. Mm -hmm. And we've ended up considering the much broader implications of how we approach any anomaly, whether it's in the farthest reaches of space or right here in our own atmosphere. That connection is crucial. So as you, our listener, go about your day, maybe consider this. If an interstellar visitor can turn from red to green, completely defy expectations and challenge our scientific models, what other extraordinary truth might be waiting for us? If we're willing to look properly. Exactly. If only we approach them with genuine curiosity and a real commitment to the evidence, not just filtering for what we expect or want to see. Keep observing, keep questioning, and definitely stay open to the universe's endless surprises.